It's quite the find. Hello friends and welcome back to Crow's Thrifty Finds. My name is Melanie. So for today's video, I figured I would show you just one day of sourcing, an, an average, or at least what could be an average day for a reseller when it comes to finding items. Now, today is Friday, so there are quite a bit of garage sales, and of course, I'll be checking out the thrift stores as well. So let's see how I do. So I just hit a honey hole for vintage t-shirts, and I had to show you all what I picked up. I'm going to go from least exciting to most exciting. I literally just sat in my car and looked all these up. I've actually bought all of these blinds, so I'm I'm pretty happy with, with what I got. There, It was the, right at the beginning of the sale. They opened the door. I was the first one in, and there was other resellers, so I didn't want to take a lot of time looking stuff up, so I just kind of grabbed and went, and it worked out pretty well, I would say. I must be getting a little good at this vintage t-shirt thing. So first, I picked up this vintage um, MTV punked shirt it's got the mtv logo on the back the punked logo on the front this is maybe like a 30 dollar shirt and then next we have a shirt from bike week from 1996 has a cool eagle on it it's from daytona there's images on the back as well <clears throat> so very cool and it's a larger size I think it's a double XL I think I can get in the 20s low 30s for this judging by what the comps were this next shirt is really really cool I cannot find one like this but it is it's not quite an all-over print but it's a very cool vintage Mighty Ducks t-shirt from 1993. So very cool. I am thinking this is probably a $50 shirt. There's a couple of small stains on it, but really I don't think it's going to be a deal breaker. This, this shirt's still in very good condition for its age. It's an extra large, which is a good size. I think this is going to be a winner. Yeah, $50 at least, but I'm going to do some more research on it. And now the most exciting of all, and this shirt is incredible. So this is a very vintage single stitch Jack Nicholson Joker shirt from the old Batman movie. This is from 1989. Very cool. I rarely ever find single stitch shirts, so this is this is a really exciting find. And I think I should be able to get around 130 for this shirt. This is definitely a winner winner chicken dinner. And this is not a shirt, but I also found a Taz plush backpack, and this is new. You can see I paid six dollars. Those t-shirts I paid two dollars each for, so that was that was good. Um so yeah. It's brand new. I think I should be able to get around 40 for it. People love these backpacks. I don't know what they're doing with them, if they're collecting them or using them actively to hold their stuff in. Doesn't matter to me. I just find it and sell it and they do whatever they want. But he is clean. He is in fantastic condition. So getting one new like this is always exciting. And last but not least, this weird Motorola phone. I have not done too much research into it yet, but I had to buy it because I've never seen a phone like this. And at $5, I should be able to make something on it. It could be a huge find. I don't know. Uh, I don't even know how to look it up. I tried to Google Lens it. It didn't find anything. So I'm just, I'm going to have to do a lot more research. And, you know, if it ends up being this astronomical price, I'll throw it up on the screen. But yeah, it was a great garage sale. So, you know, the early bird gets the worm. Well, the vintage theme is continuing. I don't believe it. So I went to a community sale and it's kind of a older folks community uh, and the vintage stuff was a plenty. So I picked up this leather Bugle Boy bag. Who remembers Bugle Boy 
from the, gosh, was it late 80s, early 90s? So it's $2. It was in okay condition for $2. I will be happy to take it and clean it up a little bit and give it a new home. And then sitting right above it, I was noticing she had some jello molds. And these, these are, two out of the three of these are new and maybe I'll just sell them in a lot. There's candy cane mold, there's a gingerbread mold, and then just your standard round mold. So these, I don't know the exact price of, I think I saw the gingerbread listed for around 20, but I figure I'll lot them all for maybe, I don't know, maybe 30. And these were only a quarter each. So it's a win no matter what I sell them for. But I know that I've mentioned in other videos that the egg jello molds are very popular. So I, I'd like to think that these more unusual ones might be popular as well. I don't know for sure, but when things are that cheap, you know, you don't look into it as hard. There's money on the table, absolutely for sure. And my most exciting find is down here. And I have to be very careful with it. It is a vintage ceramic Christmas tree. This is the first one of these I have ever seen in the wild. And she had it priced for $15. Notice there's a bulb missing, but no big deal because she actually sold me for an extra dollar a bag full of the bulbs. And now I'm questioning if I should sell the bulbs separately because I know these are popular or if I should. Oh, I see it said 75 cents. I think she charged me a dollar. Oh, well, <laughs> it's still good. So she, she gave me a lot of different um, colors to switch it out with. So either I include it with the tree or I sell them separately. I'll have to like kind of kind of look it up. But this tree is made by, I'm trying to get it out. This tree is made by the Holland Company. So this, this tree is not the most expensive of the expensive vintage trees, but it is definitely worth picking up. I would say it's probably about a $60, $70 tree. It's not huge, but my only hope is I can get it to its destination alive and not break it along the way. I might send it for a fragile pack. <laughs> it's hard to say, but it's been a good day for vintage stuff so far. No complaints here at all. Having a good day. Pretty awesome day here at Goodwill too. I got some weebles. They are five dollars and I have a lot of weebles already. I actually might just throw these in there and charge a little more for it. So that's good. Then I've got vintage, at least I think they're vintage, Adidas track pants. Things are falling down at the Goodwill, but they do look vintage. I'm not totally sure, but they're not marked up or anything, so I should be able to make something on them because I think they're only about $5. And these Under Armour shorts are for me. <laughs> and these are Lululemon leggings. They want 10 for them, which is, you know, a little marked up. But I'm debating if I want to keep them or sell them, but either way, there's still money on the table. And then I've got a North Face jacket here for 15 that I've seen being sold in the $50, $60 range. So I'm going to pick this one up too and try to resist the temptation to wear it myself. That's the struggle sometimes with reselling. You want to keep all the items. <laughs> 
So I'm back at home and I have a couple other things to show you all that I didn't talk about so much in the video, but I cannot believe how much I found today. This was all just from one day of sourcing garage sales and one trip to Goodwill and even hit up all the thrift stores in the area. I was taking this video just to show you an average day in the life of a reseller when it comes to sourcing, but this turned into a very much above average day <laughs> of sourcing. So it's certainly not like this every day, but I got a lot of bats. I got these vintage bats and I got these three for $6 and vintage bats can sell for really good money. I have not finished looking these up at this Adirondack brand. Some of these sell for really big money. And this metal one I did look up and I think it was in the $40 range. And then I've got these newer bats and I always struggle with bats because my kids play baseball. So it's like, do I save them and use them later when they fit them? I don't know. Do I sell them? But these are both two really good bat brands that go in the 30s. And I paid, as you can see, uh, $3 for each one. And I also, along with the baseball team, picked up a Minnesota Twins picture frame. These picture frames are really nice. It's brand new. Uh, they sell usually in the 30s. Um, they're, they're really nice kind of stained glass look. I actually have a couple of these that are New England Patriots. So yeah, someone will want that. And I also picked up, I might have overpaid a little bit for this, but with a zip down hoodie, I'm, I'm sure somebody will buy it, a Bud Light vintage hoodie. I love getting beer, alcohol, wine, memorabilia, just people love it. So paid $5 for that at a garage sale. And I also didn't show you all my, this beater, vintage beater here that I got for free. And I asked the lady, I said, does it work? And she said, yeah, the cord's a little loose, but it does work. And she only had one beater, but even this part here sells for 20 um, without even a beater piece. So I, I think for free, you can't lose, right? <laughs> and I showed that awesome Christmas tree. I'm still excited about that. And I showed a quick clip of myself finding these. These are small soldiers figures. If you aren't looking for these, you definitely should. For $2 each, this was a very good deal. Um, these are good to lot and, and they'll sell for really good money, but even just selling them individually. I haven't looked up these two. I just knew to pick them up, um, but um, probably could get 30 you know for the pair maybe more if one of these is rare this is the main guy so i doubt this one is but it's possible that this one could be so i knew just to pick these blind that was a no-brainer for me and also i love jurassic park uh this is a beautiful vintage hat and jurassic park hats you know they go in a in a wide array of prices but i had to get this no matter what because it's jurassic park um, if it ends up being a super expensive hat, I'll, I'll toss the total up on the screen, but uh, that was a good little find. And then I just got some little bread and butter items because they were so cheap. This is a vintage, it's kind of a, a blow mold. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but it's Halloween time. So when you see vintage Halloween stuff for 50 cents, you pick it up. I think it should be able to get around $20 for that. And this little guy here, also 50 cents, it lights up. It's Jemmy. Jemmy stuff is usually pretty good when it comes to Halloween. So even though he was tiny and 50 cents, I still think I should be able to get around $15 for him. When you pay that little, I don't mind selling stuff for $15. And that brand sells very well. So holy potatoes, this was an amazing day. I have not had an amazing day sourcing like this probably all summer like this was incredible just for one single day i just cannot believe it and that's going to do it for the video today this is melanie with crow's thrifty finds i'll see you next week